All right, so we had some news yesterday with the Toronto Maple Leafs that Jason Spezza is going to end up leaving the NHL as a player. Now, he's going back to the Leafs in an organizational role, but with the news that he is indeed departing the NHL as a player, I thought we would use this opportunity as a time to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs as well as the Ottawa Senators and potential free agent signings that they could go out there and do. Now, we're talking about a few names that have been thrown around here that I've seen circulate on social media. We're talking about forums. We're talking about blog posts as well as actual NHL insiders going out there and sharing their two cents. And I wanted to start this off with the more obvious one. The one that a lot of people have been talking about for months now, and one that's not really a new idea. Let's take our sights over to the Ottawa Senators and talk about Claude Giroux. Because we had ourselves an article coming out on Philadelphia Hockey Now saying, Hey, former Flyer star Claude Giroux going to Ottawa? It makes sense. Here are some of the quotes published by Sam Carcidi a few days ago. I don't have any negative things about my decision to come here to the Florida Panthers. I'm very happy, and it's a fun place to play, Giroux said. I believe in this group. The question was asked to Claude on whether or not he would actually be able to see himself remaining with Florida, and he said, yeah, I can. There are a lot of things to worry about, and the decision has to be made, Giroux added. It's a tough question because the season ended a few days ago. It's up to what they want to do and what I want to do. There are a lot of conversations to be had. This article specifically goes over how Giroud just ended off a long freaking deal, $8.25 million a year for eight years. There's a possibility of him returning to the Flyers, but who really knows if that's going to happen. There is also a chance, though, that he signs with his hometown Ottawa Senators, a young team that is making strides. Maybe he wants to be part of their climb and be close to his family and friends. Ottawa has plenty of cap space, so the up-and-coming Senators look like an early favorite to land Giroux, who would give their young players a veteran to lean on. I also forgot where it was said, I believe it was Elliot Friedman, but there were some NHL insiders who, throughout the past few months, had been saying that, hey, Claude Giroux, if he goes to free agency, he does not sign an extension with either the Flyers or whatever team he gets traded to at the trade deadline, there is a legit possibility that he heads over to Ottawa. There were also rumors that Ottawa was proceeding as the frontrunner in the Claude Giroux sweepstakes. Now, let's go over the profile here before we expand any further. Claude Giroux, 34 years old, 5'11", 185, a right-handed forward making $0 right now. But we did note that he was coming off an $8.275 million AAV contract over the past eight years. He had an NMC, which made his trade over to Florida something that was within his own control. And it was partially the reason, actually the only reason, let's be honest here, why the Philadelphia Flyers did not get such a big haul like they could have for a guy that was their captain and that was one of the better NHL players throughout the 2010s. He ended off his campaign in Florida with 23 points in 18 games, 3 goals, 20 assists. It's very interesting to note how Claude Giroux's goal scoring really didn't go out there and continue throughout the Florida Panthers lineup. Now, I get it. There are so many good and talented players on the team that it's tough to go out there and score all the goals when everybody else around you is scoring goals too. But it is kind of funny to just look at the goal numbers. 34 goals in 2018, 22 goals in 2019, 21 in 2020, 16 in 2021, 18 goals with the Flyers in 57 games, and then in 18 games he has three with the Panthers. He also had three goals in 10 games for a total of eight points in the playoffs where the Panthers got swept. Funny that he was able to go out there and actually produce points on a team that wasn't scoring too much either. And if you go over to Claude Giroux and his entire profile... You know, I normally wouldn't put too much stock into the idea of a guy just going home because he wants to go home, but Claude Giroux really doesn't have too much to gain anywhere else aside from a Stanley Cup. This is a guy that if he honestly goes to Ottawa, I wouldn't be too surprised, but if he goes the Corey Perry route and just starts signing with whatever team because he wants to go out there and win Lord Stanley's Grail for the first time, that wouldn't surprise me either. According to Cap Friendly here on Elite Prospects, Claude Drew has made a total of $78 million throughout his NHL career, so he could afford to take a team-friendly deal on whatever contract it is he signs next, plus he is 34 years old, so it's not really like he's going to go out there and sign maybe the longest-term contract or the most expensive AAV contract out there. He's just going to go wherever he wants to go, and whoever can afford him, because he still is a pretty good player. 
Whether or not that is Florida, whether or not that is Ottawa, whether or not it's another team, we will see. But I do think it bears repeating that Claude Giroux to the Ottawa Senators is not a dead topic yet. With that out of the way, though, let's go over to the Toronto side of things. But before we head over and do that, a big shout out from the sponsor of today's video. This video is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm talking to you, Ontario, because it is on. DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, has arrived in the province. Now you can legally bet on all your favorite sports from MMA to hockey to playoff hoops and so much more. Bet special parlays, spreads, money lines, and more, plus do it now from anywhere in the province. Not to mention you can get in on same-game parlays as well. You're all in on Colorado this playoff run? You think Tampa's gonna win by three goals next game? Let DraftKings Sportsbook add real stakes to your playoff hopes for a shot to win big during this year's hockey championship playoffs. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering a wide variety of betting markets and a mobile casino as well. It's all on in Ontario. DraftKings Sportsbook is live. So click the link in the description below to take on one of Canada's newest and best sportsbook applications in DraftKings. 19 plus to play, make sure you gamble and bet responsibly as well. Let's head over to Toronto and discuss their free agent possibilities, because now that Jason Spezza is out of the equation, there are some other bits and pieces, I think you could say, Kyle Dubas could go out there and fill. Now, I know the player we're talking about is not a Jason Spezza replacement, quote-unquote, but this is a guy that was brought up in an article on theleafsnation.com. This article by Ryan Hobart talks about how the Maple Leafs may not need toughness, but good, heavy defenders are indeed out there to sign. This player is also one that we have seen bring himself up in honestly somewhat of an ironic way on social media. I see a lot of people on Twitter, on Instagram, saying in the comment section of Leafs related posts saying, hey, sign this guy, sign this guy. And other people saying, no, don't sign this guy. What the hell are you, nuts? Let's talk about P.K. Subban. Because I know there is a very big reputation that P.K. Subban carries throughout his hockey playing career. He's a good guy. At least in some people's eyes, he seems to be. He donated a lot of money to charity. He had himself a podcast. He's a good talker, good hockey analyst, I guess you could say. And he happens to be expiring after a huge contract handed out to him by Mark Bergevin back in 2014. He was making $9 million a season since then, and he's coming off a few years where his overall performance definitely was not in the $9 million caliber tier at all. Sure, he was really good in Nashville, but that was a few years ago. Recently, P.K. Subban wrapped up a 22-point season in 77 games played, 5 goals, 17 assists, and this is a player that is going to go on the market and not demand anything in the realm of $9 million at all. We also had confirmation that the New Jersey Devils, after already trying to trade this guy earlier on in the year, are not going to go out there and re-sign this player, leaving him as a free agent to be, which is why we have articles and fans talking about the idea of him heading to Toronto. Because, of course, he's from Ontario. He is a player that could take a hometown discount to help the Leafs. Let's go back over onto the LeafsNation.com and see what the writer here has to say about the former Norris winner. Lastly, we have another player on my dream shortlist, P.K. Subban. He's an incredible person, has a personality and energy that is rare in the National Hockey League. He even had a role in one of the prime-time slapstick comedy movies where he slapped a hockey puck into a guy's area. He was hilarious, and he's awesome. He's also still a very good hockey player. Okay, there you go, LeafsNation.com going out there giving the guy the props, as he came second on our list and expected goals above replacement charts at 5.9. While he's an offensive defender, he's tough as nails, and can certainly help Toronto on the right side of defense. What he'll cost is anyone's guess. He's coming off the end of his massive 8-year, $9 million contract, so he's not hunting for money. Or he's not hurting for money, I guess you could say. Either of those could be applicable here. This would be fun as heck, and I'm fully hoping it happens for Toronto. Whether it's Boosh, Hall, or Lilypad who lose their role to Subban, I think the Leafs come out ahead. Now, this idea has definitely not been met with the highest reception out there. It's a lot more controversial than you would think, mostly because people's opinions are so polarized when it comes to Subban and how effective he is as a hockey player that it's difficult to try to project what the Leafs would be gaining and losing out on should they added somebody like PK to the mix. Now, all personality traits and energy and hospital donations aside, there is still a valuable player here. It's just 
if he's willing to sign for a huge discount, I don't think you really go out there and even consider this idea because Toronto is so strapped up to the cap anyways, they're not really able to go out there and evaluate their options as some other teams have the luxuries of being able to do. So talk to me in the comments what do you think about the ideas of Claude Giroux heading over to the Ottawa Senators because of course that idea is still there and P.K. Subban becoming a Toronto Maple Leaf. I've only picked out two names here, mostly because these two names intrigue me the most. Claude Giroux, of course, him being a superstar, P.K. Subban, him being P.K. P.K. freaking Subban. Who knows if there's some sort of a revival here that the guy could exhibit if he goes back home, but obviously I'm just kind of spitting here. It's not really something that I think has too much substance at the end of the day, but either way, if you're a Sens or a Leafs fan, talk to me in the comments. Would you want to sign these players? If so, what is the dollar amount that you would feel comfortable going for? What is the max amount of money that you feel your team should be able to go out there and spend in a situation like this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Charles 99. And bye.